We all know these women. Society valued, values their aesthetics and beauty. We know Diane Sawyer's legs, we know George Clooney's trophy wife Amal, and we know Emma Watson's beautiful face. And we tend to recognize these things only because of their looks and not because of their accomplishments. But in order to have a sustainable world, women need to be recognized for more than just their looks. Because they've won the Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism. There are successful human rights lawyers and there are UN Goodwill ambassadors who have attended Ivy League schools. But we don't know these things because society doesn't get past their looks on social media or in a magazine. While figuring out how to start this TEDx talk, I looked up beautiful, successful women. And the first thing that showed up was 20 accomplished women share how to dress for success. And the top 10 hottest and most beautiful Asian women of 2019. And the 20 most beautiful black women in the world. And only two helpful links popped up. The 100 most accomplished Canadian women, and the 20 most accomplished women in history. But nowhere in these names is Donna Strickland mentioned, a Nobel Prize winner in physics, or Tiara Fletcher, a girl who's building a rocket ship at age 21, or Macy Jemison, the first African-American woman to be an astronaut, to go in space. These women, have to fight, these women have to fight stereotypes all the time. So how is it any wonder that girls dream of becoming the next Instagram model instead of a true change maker when society judges them solely for their appearance? These are the pressures that young girls are flooded with every day. And these are the pressures that I've been flooded with every day. My whole life, I've been scared to show that I'm more than just what I look like. I hide behind my long hair and my bubbly personality. So yes, I'm loud and I'm outgoing, but I'm also scared and nervous all the time. The doubts, the fears, the worries, and the insecurities nag at me. Doubts and insecurities can give wisdom, but only if you know when to listen to them and when to ignore them. And finding this balance is hard. It's been an uphill battle for me, trying to get past these voices. I have no, re no reason to doubt who I am, but the pressures of society have made me a girl who is hiding her true self. But I started thinking recently, am I alone? Are there other girls out there like me who hide behind their hair or have what I like to call a school face to put on when they leave the house? A way of nervously laughing off things that don't go their way, or need background noise on all the time to distract themselves from the voices in their head. When I was younger, I dreamed of being a secretary, and I was just so excited to pursue this career in secretarying, as I called it. And this was because I had no idea what other role models were out there for me. I had no one to look up to. All I had was Hannah Montana, someone who, per <laughs> someone who perfectly embodies the stereotype that's pushing women away from the STEM fields. She has the long hair, she doesn't care about her education, she worries about only boys in makeup. And this is not what I wanted. Where were the astronauts and the women pilots and engineers and trailblazers? Where are the people that I could really look up to? The great women in STEM are practically unheard of. Like women like Patricia Bath, the first African-American woman to receive a medical patent in 1988, compared to the first male to receive one in, 17 <laughs> in 1796. This is crazy and it's disappointing. Why are the great women in STEM not celebrated, not broadcasted and not heard of? My voice of doubt started in the third grade. Um, I was being tested at school for a gift, gifted program and I was so excited to have been chosen. But the students who weren't chosen made me feel like it was not something to be proud of. They said, well, why do you even want to do that? That's so nerdy. And, I, and their little kid voices stayed in my head for weeks. But I did end up getting into the program and being ashamed of something I had been looking forward to. But when did becoming a smart girl be something to hide? Why was I embarrassed about learning new and exciting material? Why was I hiding my true self? I did end up staying in the program for the next three years, and some of my happiest memories in elementary school were in that classroom. It became a safe space for me to excel, with students like me and teachers who cared about educating their students the right way. But my family's jobs changed, and we moved from Atlanta to Riverview. I was ripped from my friends and the school I was just starting to love halfway through the fifth grade. I walked into my elementary school in a town so small I didn't even know it existed. I sat down at this new, cold, empty desk with a group of strangers who had been friends since birth, so you could say it was intimidating. And we started doing some math, some science, and some English, and I realized that I had learned this material years ago. So now, not only was I the new girl with the funny accent who says, y'all, and ain't, and bless your sweetheart, I was a know-it-all. So you could say I had a great first day of school. 
My parents quickly realized, though, that I was bored. So they put me into the French program at school. So now I was bored in a different language. That was fun. Um, it stayed this way for two years before I decided it was time for a change. I asked my mom if she thought there was a way I could skip a grade. And I was kind of joking when I said it, but she looked back at me and she said, well, why not? So there she was, calling the teachers, calling the administration, and within a couple days, I was taking tests. The test lasted for several days, and I met with the administration and my teachers to talk about the social shift I'd be making. They finally said yes. So now it was official. I was going to high school at age 13, and it was terrifying. But the first day of school came, and I had a great day, and I made a friend, and it was awesome. And I knew that I had made the right choice for myself at the time. I was being challenged in school every day. I had matured quickly out of necessity. Grades 9 and 10 flew by. Grade 11 came, and I took the bios and the pre-calcs and the chems, and I was loving school. But even with my strong academics, I was struggling with being myself. Even though I was excelling in my classes, I was having trouble with the social shift and my mental health. High school is not only about the education, because the social culture has such a massive influence over how students progress over the years. And my social shift had impacted my insecurity more than I had expected. I was unable to raise my hand in class because the fear of being wrong was overwhelming. I thought, I'm the girl who skipped a grade. I'm supposed to be a genius. I can't make mistakes. Imperfection was not an option for me. So I felt alone. But high school is the four years where you're supposed to find yourself before your life really starts. It's when you can choose to ignore this background noise and be who you truly are. And I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to do so. I joined a program that changed my life, and I wouldn't be standing here today if I hadn't have joined that program. Current Generation is an after-school program that combines high school physics with solving real-world problems. And it started when a girl from my school traveled to the Dominican Republic on a mission trip where she met two girls called Haley and Maria. Here they are. <laughs> they were studying to be doctors, but studying to be a doctor was difficult because their town suffered from rolling blackouts. Rolling blackouts are when you lose electricity for days at a time, so studying at night was impossible. The student from my school came back and said it was time to make a change. And now six years later, we have about 10 students designing cases, soldering circuit boards, and shipping lights off to students in need, like Haley and Maria. Since then, we've partnered with Colorado and the UK in hopes to expand our global reach. And we've designed a variety of lights, like a headlamp, a, la a lantern, and like a textbook light that lights up a whole page. We sent about 500 lights around the world, and we're excited to make new opportunities and meet new people. So when we were invited to the New York Maker Fair in September of last year, it was an exciting ordeal. I had never been to New York before, so that was cool. Um, but before going to the fair, I didn't realize how exciting it was what we were doing. I didn't realize that we were literally giving students light so they, they could follow their dreams. And it was such an uplifting feeling for me to know that I could make a change like that in someone's life. I remember talking to the cutest little girl. She was wearing a bright pink NASA hat. And I was telling her the story of Haley and Maria and how the lights work and how to solder and stuff while my friend was teaching her how to physically solder. She stayed at the booth for a little bit, and when she left, we heard her turn to her mom and say, Mom, I'm going to be an electrical engineer at NASA. And then she straightened her hat, said, can we get some ice cream, and walked away. But uh, this had really touched my heart. We had made a real impact on this girl's life. I was becoming a role model, but it also upset me. Because why didn't this happen to me when I was a young girl? Where was my inspiration, and where was my role model? But this little girl had helped me find my purpose because it was at the fair when I decided on a career in engineering. Because for me, there's something about the way the smoke curls in the air when you're soldering and the act of physically building something that called out to me, calling out louder than my voice of doubt and my insecurity that had been taking over my brain for years. And it was then that I knew, this is how I change the world. This is how I become the best version of myself. And since then, I decided to join biomedical engineering, which combines healthcare and biology principles and engineering principles with helping the healthcare system. And since I decided on engineering and since I talked to this little girl, I have started accepting who I am. Someone who loves school and learning and building stuff and art, fair, art <laughs> projects and science fairs. I've become stronger and I've become better. I know now that I can do this. I can be the best version of myself. I can make a true change in the world. And school, my high school experience has taught me how to embrace myself, how to be the best version of myself. But not a lot of girls get this opportunity in high school. 
I'm only one of the few lucky ones. A majority of girls don't find out who they are. And changing the school system is key to a sustainable world and key to helping these girls find their purpose. But changing the school system means not only the curriculum, but the culture within schools. It means project-based classes and innovation and all that is not enough. Girls need to be at the front with their heads held high, ready to change the world. And the only way that this will happen is by providing them with real role models, by positively influencing them from a young age to follow their dreams, to quiet the voice of doubt that society has put in their heads. This will provide for a more sustainable world. We need to have project-based classes, teachers who can shape their students into good people, schools who embrace change and raise awareness about the world's problems will provide for a more sustainable world. Girls bring the heart, the empathy, and the passion. It's our time to shine. We must become the trailblazers, the world leaders, the astronauts, the physicists, the activists. It's our time to shine. So thank you for having me, and I hope this talk will help the 131 million girls worldwide who aren't in school get an education. Thank you. Thank you.